Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCS EPE lesson. In this one we'll be making a start on topic 1.3, movement analysis, beginning with the first learning objective on the three classes of lever and the term mechanical advantage. Before we begin, if you like the slides I use in my videos, I'll leave a link to my resource store in the description. They follow the OCR syllabus exactly and contain absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. So a lever is a rigid structure, otherwise known as a lever arm, that turns around an axis or pivot to create movement. Levers are made of four different components, the lever arm, fulcrum, effort and load or resistance. In the human body, lever arms are bones, fulcrums tend to be joints, effort force is generated by the muscles and load forces come from the weight of the body or resistance from an external object. Now you need to know about the three classes of lever. With first class levers, the fulcrum is located between the effort and load forces on the lever arm. In other words, the fulcrum is always in the middle of a first class lever. The example that you need to know about in the human body is the neck joint. The joint itself is the fulcrum, the load comes from the weight of the head and is directed downwards, and the effort comes from the trapezius muscle which pulls on the cranium as it contracts. In this diagram you can clearly see the order of the three components of a first class lever with the fulcrum in the middle. And it doesn't matter whether the effort or load are on the left or the right, it all just depends on which way round the lever is viewed from. Applied to examples Examples from physical activity and sport. The first class lever at the neck is used when heading in football or to tilt the head back when serving in volleyball. With second class levers the load force sits between the fulcrum and effort force. So again all you need to remember is that the load force is in the middle, it doesn't matter which way round you place the fulcrum and the effort. The ankle joint is an example of a second class lever in the body as the fulcrum is located at one end, the joints between the toes and the ball of the foot, the weight of the body is the load in the middle and the gastrocnemius or calf muscle provides the effort. Again we have a diagram here of a second class lever with the load force in the middle and the fulcrum and effort at either end. Applied to examples from physical activity and sport, the second class lever at the ankle is used to plant a flex or push off the toes when performing a layup in basketball and when pointing the toes during activities like diving and gymnastics. Finally, moving on to third class levers, the effort is located between the fulcrum and load force on the lever arm. The example that you need to know about is at the elbow joint. The joint itself is the fulcrum, effort comes from the bicep muscle as it contracts, and the load force comes from the weight of the arm, hand, and anything being held, in this case a dumbbell. For example, the third class lever at the elbow joint is used to bend the elbow during the upward phase of a bicep curl. Now in addition to the three classes of lever, you also need to know about something called mechanical advantage. So simply put, mechanical advantage is the ability to move large loads with a smaller amount of effort. Now I've put here that all second class levers provide a mechanical advantage. For example, when standing on tiptoes, the effort produced by the gastrocnemius muscles is less than the load force created by the weight of the body. An easy way of understanding the effects of mechanical advantage with second class levers is to think of a wheelbarrow. The effort required to lift the wheelbarrow is significantly less than the weight of the objects contained within it. Okay, so that was everything you need to know on lever systems, but before we finish we'll take a look at some past exam questions to put some of this information into context. So figure 12 shows the legs and feet of a high diver preparing to dive into the water, and the fulcrum has already been labelled on the diagram. Draw an arrow on figure 12 to show each of the following, the direction of the load and the direction of the effort. So as we know the load force comes from the weight of the body and therefore should be directed downwards and the effort force from the gastrocnemius muscles opposes the load force and should therefore be directed upwards. Next using practical examples compare the differences between first and second class levers. So within first class levers the fulcrum is located between the load and effort forces in other words in the middle of the lever arm. For example the neck joint when heading in football. With second class class levers the load is located between the fulcrum and the effort force, for example the ankle joint when pushing off the board in long jump. Finally explain how lever systems may have mechanical advantage and I've put here that all second class levers have mechanical advantage and that this is the ability to move large loads with a smaller amount of effort. Okay so that was everything for the first learning objective on topic 1.3 movement analysis. Join me next time for the second and final learning objective on planes of movement and axes of rotation.